Okay, today we are going to talk about the adjustable hosel driver. What can it do? What can't it do? And how does it really work? Let's go. Hi everyone, it's AJ, the Mobile Club Maker. Thanks for watching the video. As always, if you enjoy it, please like it, share it, or subscribe to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the adjustable hosel driver. Um, I'm saying driver, but you know, the same basic rules apply, whether it's a driver, a fairway wood, a hybrid, any of them. Uh, but we're going to just say driver just to keep it simple today. Specifically, we're going to talk about the adjustable driver and how it works, how it changes the loft, how it changes the lie. What about the face angle? We're going to cover all that. You know, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube already, basically just regurgitating the information that is on the manufacturer's website. Um, or, you know, basically referring back to when you used to get these drivers in the beginning and they'd come with a bundle of stuff, including a little circular disc of cardboard that had a little slider and you could move it around and say, if I adjust it to here, this is what happens. And if I move it here. Um, so they tell you that sort of thing, the basics, but they don't really explain how it works, why it does what it does, and what the you know, quote unquote side effects might be when you make one adjustment. So we're gonna cover all that today. We're gonna talk about how does it change the loft? How does it change the lie? What happens to the face angle? And how it does all that just using this little hosel piece. We're gonna cover all that today. Okay, so before we get started talking about how and why the adjustable hosel driver works, we have to make two assumptions. Uh, call this the fine print that we're going to have over this entire video. The first assumption is that the golfer, regardless of what sort of adjustments they make to the hosel, will always play with the shaft in the same orientation. Okay? Basically just saying, if I play this driver with the shaft perfectly perpendicular like this, Whatever adjustments I may make to the hosel, I am going to continue to keep the hosel, excuse me, continue to keep the shaft in the same orientation. Likewise, if I always play the shaft with a slight forward lean like this, regardless of what I do with the head, the hosel adapter, I will continue to play with that same shaft lean. That's the first assumption. We'll come back to why that's important. The second one, same sort of deal. Whatever sort of adjustment I make with this head, whatever I do to the hosel adapter, I will always align the golf club with the face pointed at the target. Regardless of what I do, regardless of how I change the loft or the lie on the adapter, I will always line up the face pointed at the target. Okay, so those are the two assumptions we have to make, and I'll come back to that later as far as why that's important. But we have to get that out of the way first for everything else to sort of make sense and run smoothly. So how does an adjustable hosel driver work or any adjustable hosel club? What is the mechanics of it, if you will? It all comes down to the fact that this adapter and this shaft are not running parallel. Okay. So if I have a traditional golf club, an iron, a bonded hosel driver that doesn't have a, an adjustable hosel. The hosel runs parallel with the shaft. That makes sense. Whatever the hosel is doing, whatever direction that's pointing, the shaft is pointing in the exact same direction, ideally if it fits correctly, because it's fitting down inside that hosel. An adjustable hosel means that the shaft is actually entering into the adapter at a slight angle. It's usually a couple degrees. So instead of the shaft, and in this case, we're just going to call this the hosel for a minute. Instead of the shaft and the hosel just running in a straight parallel line, well now, if you look at it from, depending on your angle, the hosel is running at a slight angle to the shaft. So like that, and then the shaft like that, of a couple, about a couple degrees. Easy way to think about this, and I took a video, which I'm going to show you here, is think of a clock face. 
If I stare down at my golf club from the butt end, if I'm looking right down the shaft, staring at the butt end of the golf club, staring at the grip cap, and I start making these adjustments, rotating the hosel, what you'll see is basically sort of a clock face picture developing. So as you can see in the video, as you rotate around, moving the shaft, clicking it into each of the different positions, the shaft is essentially moving in a little circle or a little cone around the hosel. Assuming that we keep the head completely locked in place and we're only adjusting the hosel adapter, the shaft is moving in a little cone around the center. So that's the very basics of how the adjustable hosel does everything it does. That's, that's the foundation. Once you understand that, well then you can start to apply that and understand how it's changing the loft and the lie. Oh, and just as a side note, because there are a couple different variations on how manufacturers choose to uh, make their adjustable hosels. Most of them utilize just a fixed adapter like this one with a slight angle in it. There are also a few that utilize, instead of a fixed adapter like this, little movable cogs that you can rotate around. They do the same exact thing, it's just a matter of in one case you have to rotate the physical shaft and in the other case you're just rotating the cogs so the orientation of the shaft stays consistent. Um, you know, if you've got the logo down, the logo is going to stay down. You just adjust the little cogs on it versus this kind of adapter where if you make an adjustment, all of a sudden you're rotating the entire shaft. Just a distinction, but they work the same way. Now, the first thing we have to say before we get into this is we have to go back to our number one assumption, which is the golfer, regardless of what we do with the adjustable hosel, is going to play the shaft in the same position regardless. If they play it perpendicular to the ground, call it like this, they will continue to do that. If they play with a slight lean forward, they will continue to do that. For any of this to make sense and work properly, we have to have that as one of our two assumptions. So we know that the golfer, let's say in this case, is going to play the golf club perfectly perpendicular. The shaft is gonna be straight up and down all the time, so we can keep this simple. When you look at the driver, in its neutral setting, its starting point, if you pick it up off the rack, how it's set, the loft on the head is going to be whatever the loft says it is, more or less, with intolerances, because the shaft is set perfectly perpendicular, perfectly straight up and down. Now we know, because of what we've already talked about, it's not really perfectly straight, because perfectly straight, let's say, would mean going like this and what's actually happening is it's either leaning a little bit up like this or it's leaning a little bit down like this depending on what the manufacturer decided to be the starting point whether they wanted it to be more upright or flat but as far as looking at it in this orientation the shaft is going to be perfectly straight up and down so let's say then that we take the shaft adapter and we rotate it 90 degrees so let's say to start with, and I'm now going to move, we'll do this a couple different ways. So right now I'm going to say that the shaft was in a position where it was leaning slightly up. That was the neutral position that was the manufacturer chose. If you rotate it 90 degrees in one direction, let's say, all of a sudden it's now leaning forward. Call it uh, leaning shaft forward. If you rotate it the other direction, let's say, then it's going to be leaning shaft backwards. Now, this is obviously an exaggeration. It wouldn't be this much, but to show you. Okay, so now that we understand that, and we have our assumption number one, that the golfer is going to play it with the shaft in the same position. If I adjust this club and have the shaft now leaning back like this, the golfer is going to position the shaft when he hits the ball, leaning back into that perpendicular straight up and down position. Well, do you see what happened when we did that? All of a sudden, in order to move the shaft back up because of this angle, the loft has now gone down. Likewise, if we set up and we rotate the hosel so that the shaft is now leaning forward, well, the golfer is going to take it 
and lean it backwards to get that shaft back in that perpendicular straight up and down position. What happens in this case, the loft increases. So this right here is how you get the loft changes in any adjustable club. It's a matter of how much the shaft is either leaning back or leaning forward. And then after the golfer makes that adjustment, that shows up in the face. So if it's leaning, say, the full two degrees from that hosel adapter, leaning two degrees forward, when the golfer sets up with that club in a, in a neutral up and down position, you've now increased the loft by two degrees. Yeah, okay. okay, so now that we understand that we can adjust the loft based off of how much the shaft leans forward or backwards, we can apply that exact same thing to the lie angle and understand how the lie works. Only instead of the shaft moving in this plane, in this direction, the shaft is now moving in this plane, in this direction, this being more upright or, or more flat. It's the exact same thing though. As you make those hosel adjustments, say you have it like this and you rotate it, in this case, let's call it 180 degrees. So instead of down here, it's now all the way up here. Well, the golfer is going to set the shaft back, in this case, in the same position that he would naturally play it in. And as you can see, it's now more upright. The head has gotten more upright. Likewise, if it started out here more upright and we rotated the shaft so that it's now more down in this position, the golfer is going to make that adjustment, bring it up, and what happens? The head flattens out. You've now made the lie flatter. So understanding that depending on how you orient the shaft in this plane, we're changing the loft and how we orient the shaft in this plane, we're changing the lie. Well, we can see with sort of moving the shaft incrementally, that being we're not moving it in say 90 degree intervals, but moving it in smaller intervals. Well, you can see how moving it a little bit will change both the loft and the lie. Again, the most important part of it is really the loft because the loft is gonna have a much bigger impact on your shot than the change in lie angle because the face angle, excuse me, because the loft is so low on a driver, the change in lie angle will have a much smaller impact versus uh, the loft. So that's usually the thing they focus on mainly is how it's changing the loft. It is changing the lie as you move around it, but it's by a small amount and in most cases it'll be inconsequential to most golfers. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is what happens when we start adjusting the loft? What happens to the face? And this is gonna be for two reasons. One, I'm gonna show you that we are actually changing the loft. And secondly, we're gonna talk about how that can impact how the face angle sits. So if you see here, I'm gonna go ahead, put the golf club into my uh, loft lie gauge and show you exactly what it looks like when we change the loft, starting in two degree increments, starting at seven and a half degrees. So you can see when we set that shaft on the hosel adapter at seven and a half degrees and then adjust the shaft back to a neutral up and down position, you can see that the loft has gone down. Keep moving with that, and you can see when we move up to 11 and a half degree, what happens? Well, in this case, again, we have to move the shaft back to that neutral up and down position, and at that point, it has now increased the loft, those two degrees, to 11 and a half. So we've got four degrees of difference. Now here is where it can get a little bit complicated and some people will argue that the loft change is actually not a loft change at all, but actually just a face angle change. Again, now, if we're gonna be talking about this, we have to go back to that 
second assumption now, which is the assumption, first assumption was that the shaft is going to stay in the same position regardless of what we do with that adjustable hosel. The second assumption was that regardless of what we do with that hosel adjustment, we are going to point the face at the target. That being we're trying to set up, we'll say, with a square face every time. Now, if we go back and look at what we just did when we took those measurements and showing how the, how the loft changes as we moved through the hosel settings, you'll notice something else, and I'll show this up here. So we can see from looking at the head in the loft lie gauge, what's happening as we adjust through the hosel settings and changing the loft. You can see that the way that we get the loft change is the entire head is being tilted either more up or down to either increase the loft or decrease the loft. And that's all based on, again, that hosel adjustment where that hosel is at an angle. Okay, but now I want you to look at something else. Take a look at the sole of the club, the bottom of the club, as it relates to the base plate on the loft lie gauge, starting out with its neutral 9.5 degree loft. Take a note of where the lowest portion of the club head is, the lowest portion of the sole is, in relation to the base plate, okay? Now let's look at the seven and a half degree. Again, take a look at that seven and a half degree loft on it now and take a look at how the what I call the contact point how it's moved okay this is the 11 and a half degree loft now again take a look at where the contact point that being the lowest point on the sole the place that's going to touch the ground first okay what you're going to notice is it moves right we start out here say at 9.5 degree as we loft down lowering the loft to 7.5, the entire head is sort of tilting forward. That contact point is now moving from, say, here to a little bit further forward here. Likewise, if we take the head and we increase the loft, well, we've now tilted the entire head backwards. Our contact point has now gone from, say, where it was here at 9.5 degrees, it's now a little further back at 11.5 degrees. Well, what does this mean? Well, ideally, when a club sits on the ground, you kind of have this balance between the contact point, where it touches the ground, and the balance point of the club, how the weight of it makes it sit. And if a club sits perfectly square like this, that usually means it's gonna have its contact point and its balance point in the same general vicinity. So it just naturally will sit there comfortably and not wanna move. However, what happens when we tilt that forward or tilt it backwards. Well, if we de-loft the club and we tilt that head forward, that contact point is now moved ahead of the balance point. Well, what does that mean? Well, the head is naturally gonna to want to fall backwards. Likewise, if we increase the loft and now have that contact point further back, the head is naturally going to, again, want to fall toward the balance point a little further forward. And so what that means is because the way the golf club is designed, what happens is the head doesn't just fall straight forward or straight back based off of that relationship between the balance point and the contact point, because remember, it's connected in to the shaft. So it's going to want to not only, in this case, if it's lofted up, want to fall back down, it's also going to fall sort of closed as it rotates around the hosel, as it rotates around the shaft. Likewise, if we de-loft the club, the club head not only wants to fall backwards, but because of where it's attached to the shaft, it also falls open. So this is where the face angle comes into it and why you will hear some people say that the adjustable hosel is just changing face angle, it's not changing loft. That's only true if we aren't paying attention to our second assumption. That second assumption being that you're gonna play the club with the face pointed at your target. If you do that, and the face is always pointed at the target, then all these adjustments, greater loft, lower loft, more lie angle, lower lie angle, 
they will all be accurate. The only way it doesn't work is if you just let the club sit in some random position based off of how it wants to fall and rest on the ground. I don't know too many golfers who would just lay the club down and not adjust it if it needed to be adjusted. Now, the golfer may not ideally like that it falls open or closed and may choose to either pick a different club or not use those settings because of that. But even then, if they do use it, they're probably going to set up with it square faced. If you do that, if you set up with the face square to your target, then these changes will always occur and be accurate in relation to what the hosel says they are. It's only if you don't that all of a sudden, well, then it's a Pandora's box. Um, and it's really no different if you're using irons or wedges or any of those clubs. How many of those clubs will you sit down on the ground and have it naturally just sit perfectly flat and aimed at your target? You're always having to slightly manipulate the club head, move it around a little to get it pointed at your target. Why should it be any different for a driver? I don't know. I have no issues with the adjustable hosels making the claims that they do because quite frankly, I think most golfers are going to play one with the shaft in that same position every time, our assumption one, and two, always play with the face pointed at the target, assumption two. All right, so hopefully this makes a little better sense now. We've covered one, how the adjustable hosel and the shaft are lined up that being at that slight angle and how as you rotate it, it moves the shaft in a cone pattern. We've talked about secondly, how depending on how that shaft is then inserted into the head and then brought back to its neutral position, it can either increase the loft, it can decrease the loft, or it can change the lie angle. We've also talked about how depending on how that shaft is oriented in the head and how the head sits on the ground, how it's gonna to wanna to fall either open or closed a little based on where that contact point is in relation to the balance point and how as long as you keep a square club face, all those changes that the hosel says you're getting will actually hold true. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Like I said, this is a subject I think is, it's reasonably complicated and I think that's why most people don't ever try and cover it. but. If you have a better idea of how it works, then you can really understand what you're doing, what you need to look out for when you make these changes and how it's going to affect your golf game. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, please like it, share it, or subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's a pretty crazy time right now. I know everyone try and uh, stay safe and stay sane, and we will see you next time. Thanks.